Hey guys, it's Adrian Jensen from ProductionCrate.com. I just wanted to give you a fun little extra video wherein I break down this sweet underwater sunken ship shot. I started off with some footage of some dudes under, what is this stuff, water? I tracked it using the built-in 3D camera tracker and made a null object about where I wanted the ship to be. I went to Render Crate and downloaded this cool sunken ship model and I brought it into Element. I created a group null for it and shift parented it to the null that was already in my scene and that causes it to jump to that other null's location and then I can adjust it from there. I also want to add some lighting that sort of matches the footage so for me that's a blue-ish parallel light which is going to be the sun as well as a murky purplish ambient light. That's because if you look at these shadows in the footage they're pretty purple so if I have a purple ambient light in my scene my shadows are going to be that color as well. On the element layer we want want shadows, we want ambient occlusion, we want some fog as well. We're gonna turn all that on. For that fog, we're gonna steal a color from the background. The bottom of this ship is a problem. It does not look like it's in the coral and rotoscoping this is gonna be a nightmare. So let's just not. Back on render crate, let's open up the nature category and then click on landscape. I'm gonna use this one called Rocky Landscape Feature, but you could get similar results with any of these models. We even have some actual coral. In element, I'm gonna drop a few of these around the bottom of my ship and I'm gonna apply a matte shadow material to them, which turns them invisible. Ooh. Back in After Effects, now the ship is being partly obscured by the coral. It's not perfect, but often these things that aren't the focus of the shot don't have to be perfect. Just close enough so the viewer doesn't notice something's wrong. For some of these foreground bits that are closer to the camera than they are to the ship, we are going to have to rotoscope those, but it's not that big a deal because they're just static shapes and Mocha makes that super easy. I actually have a full rotoscoping course that goes over this in detail if you want. When I was making this, I rotoscoped out this whole fish only to later realize that it doesn't cross over the ship and it was a waste of time. So instead I duplicated him and I grabbed him and I moved him over here. So now it wasn't a waste of time. I can actually make as many fish as I want. Are you proud of me now, dad? Now we also got to rotoscope out this diver and he's going to be a bit more tricky than the coral. So we need to get tricky as well. He's actually sort of on a blue screen, isn't he? So, could we just key him? I did this with Primat Keyer 6 from Red Giant. I just think it works a bit better than a key light and it's easier to use. It sort of worked here too. There's a few holes in the tank and the mask, but those are simple shapes that we can easily rotoscope with Mocha. So, uh, wow, we actually saved ourselves a lot of time here. Nice. In the rotoscope course that I mentioned earlier, there actually is a chapter on avoiding rotoscoping also. Not every instance is going to be quite as easy as this one was, but once you know the tricks, you'll be surprised on what you can actually get away with. The bubbles I extracted separately just to get a bit of a softer edge on those and then I gave those a lightened transfer mode to blend them in a bit better. For some extra detail we can add some caustics on top of the ship to make it match the corals a bit better. I do this by first duplicating the whole comp and in the new comp I delete everything except for the element layer and the sunlight and the control null and the camera. Basically anything that isn't necessary for the ship. Now we need to go on footage crate and get this caustics pattern. There are two versions, one with a feathered edge and one that tiles, and we just wanna use the tiling one. We're gonna set this as a custom texture map and element, and we're gonna open the interface back up. Now we wanna make this our texture on the ship. We're gonna start with the flat color preset and element because it doesn't have any shading, and that's gonna give us a head start. So we go in there and we set the diffuse texture as our custom texture, and then we just change the diffuse color to white so it's not messing with the color of our texture anymore. We also wanna Make sure the UV mapping on the ship is set to plane XZ. This means the texture is going to be projected from the top. So if you look at the horizontal surfaces, the texture looks normal, but on these vertical surfaces, like the sails, it's all stretched out, which looks weird, but it is what we want. If you think about it, this is how this would work. Next, we want to duplicate the element layer and open up the interface for a final time. And on this one, we just give the ship a plain white material. The plastic white one is fine. Probably don't use anything that's shiny. And then in the 
environment, we're just going to turn the brightness of that all the way down. Since we have the parallel light in the scene, this is going to give us a mostly black and white image with a little bit of gradation here and there. Let's add a solid composite to it and we're going to give that a black background and then we'll set this layer as a multiply transfer mode. Now since the light in this scene is the same as the one that's in our other scene, the caustics are going to only appear where there is direct light, which is just what we want. The caustics in the actual footage are a little bit more of a golden color rather than a blue. So we're just going to add an adjustment layer with a tritone and then we can even leave that on the default settings. It's cool. So now we need to bring this comp back into our main comp over the ship layer and give it a screen transfer mode. Now for some final touches that aren't totally necessary, but I find having some effects that go over your CGI as well as your footage kind of helps blend them together a bit more. So I use Trap Code Shine to give us some light rays and I use the Red Giant Heat Wave plugin to add a little bit of wavy motion and some blurring. I also like Uni.Finisher and I use the Soto preset. Now all of these are third party tools that come with Red Giant Complete. Yeah, we're not sponsored. We just think that the tools are really great and we use them all the time. And that's it for this little breakdown. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Make it awesome. Make it awesome. Make it awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. Make it awesome.